Let's write the smart contract for our insurance industry and at the end of the video I will tell you that in which industry you can utilize it and how it's going to impact the blockchain financial structure. So let's write the contract, we'll provide this license identifier, we'll take the solidity version, uh, we'll take this 8.0 and we have to define the contract and we'll call it insurance. And then we have to define a couple of state variables because we have to store the data. So the first state variable we have is this address which is a array type and we'll call it policy holder. So those who will hold the policy in the contract, we have to keep their address in this array. Now we have to take the second mapping and that we have to map with the policy. Okay, because every single policy will have an ID and we are mapping based on the address. So if a user have taken a particular policy and we have that his address in the mapping, in the mapping and we have to keep the track. So what policy he or she has taken in the policies okay there is a multiple policies so this is the mapping we have now we have to take another mapping in that we have to keep the track of the let's say claims so in the third mapping we have to keep the track of all the claims so it's going to be a mapping address unt which is a id of the policy and the claims the third fourth one we have is the address payable owner so the one who will deploy the contract and now we have to keep the track of the policy total premium and that's the straight variable we have taken now let's come here here we have to initialize our constructor and we don't need to pass anything in our constructor all we have to do is to simply update the owner so i believe that whatever we have done so far it makes sense so first the array we have taken is for the policy holders so all the addresses of the policy holders will go into that array then we have this mapping in that we are keeping the track of that policy holder based on the address and it will return this unt so every single policy will have a unique id number and that's what we are returning here now we have the second mapping in that we are mapping based on the address and in that we are keeping the track of the claim so like who actually claimed in the policy that's the track we are keeping it here and we are simply making the honor and premium and this is our constructor so hope things are clear to you let's move ahead now we have to create the function so the first function we have is the purchase policy obviously because this is if it's a new contract we need to have a function which allow the user to buy the policies and here we have to do the checks so message dot value is equal to the premium so the amount will set that's what we are keeping track here and if the amount is not equal to that then we have to throw this error message so that's the simple check let's come here here we have to do the another check that premium is more than zero not less than zero okay if it's zero then we have to throw this error message that greater than zero looks fine less we have to set the policy and we have to push the address in the in the policy holders and here we have to simply turn this premium okay so hope this makes sense to all of you guys so we are simply pushing the entire data into our array then we are simply updating the mapping and we are passing the amount he has provided the premium he has provided let's take this total premium and we have to simply add that so all the amount will going to store into this total premium okay so this is the very first function we have let's come here let's create a second function and that we have to call file claim so this function will allow them to claim for the policies and that they have to pass the amount public and in that we have to do a couple of checks so policy dot message dot policy policy is an array and that we have the all the addresses so we have to match the addresses of the person who is calling and we have to check for this fund that he has provided any money or he have taken any policy so that's what we are checking if it's not there then we have to throw this error message that I have a valid to file a claim so that's the first check let's do the second check that amount is greater than zero so whatever amount you want to claim it should be zero it should be greater than zero not zero and here we have to do the third check that amount is less or equal to the policy message dot sender whatever amount he has provided or if he and this is the error message exceed policy limit and here we have to simply pass this data into the claim and we have to increase the amount in the claim okay because claim will keep the track of the users and how much money they have withdrawn so that's the track we are keeping okay so this is the file claim function we have let's write the third function which is called proof approve claim when someone will file a claim we have to have a function in the contract which allow them to approve okay so it will take the address and the policy holder and here we have to do the check so message dot sender is equal to the owner only owner can approve claim obviously that's not a big obviously owner has the authority to release the fund the second check we have to do is the claim 
So the amount should be greater than zero. Otherwise, the policyholder has no outstanding claim. Okay. So this contract works in this way. So just imagine that there is a fixed amount of uh, money a user can withdraw and it, they can claim. Okay. So they can withdraw the fund in terms of all the fund together or they can withdraw the fund in a small amount so that's why we are going with this approach every time we are making the claim or transferring the fund we are doing this check that the policy the claim should be greater than zero okay that's the second check here we have to take the payable and we have to simply do the transfer to the policy holder hope this makes sense to all of you guys and here we have to simply update the data in our claim so policy so claim policy holder has zero balance that looks pretty fine this is the second third function we have approve claim let's write the fourth function get policy and that we have to simply pass the policy holder and it will going to return the policy so in that we are returning the data of the policy that's pretty simple because the user will buy the policy and they need to have a function in the contract so they can check that what policy they have bought so this is the get policy function we have now we have to create one more function called get claim and this will allow them to check that how many claims they have made so in that we have to simply return and the claims we want to return that what policy they have claimed so that's the check we can able to do here now let's come here here we have to create one more function get total premium okay so how many how much money they have paid as a premium so they can check with this function so we'll say public view return unt and we have to simply run the amount so we have to keep the track of the premium the total premium that how much premium we have in the contract so that's the function we have and now we have to create one more function called grant access so if anybody wants grant access because sometimes what happened that the owner wants to provide the access to someone else so we need to have a function in the contract which can does that okay so we'll say address we'll take the address of the user and public and in that we have to do the first check so we have to check that the message or sender is the owner. If it's not the owner, then we have to throw this error message. But if it's the owner, then we have to simply grant the access. So I believe this makes sense to all of you guys that we have written so many functions and you can do a lot of things in each of these functions. So we are going with the simple data, but in the real world project, it's more complex. The only reason we are writing this contract because I want you to understand that how the contract exactly work. And when you are building a contract for any industry, how you have to structure the contract and what are the function you have to be focused and what data types you have to take. Okay, so this is the function grant access. And now we have to simply write one more function to remove the access. Okay, that's quite similar. So let's do that very quickly. So we have to check for the condition that only owner can remove the function. Okay, sorry, remove the access. Now we have to do the second check that user, the one who is calling this function is not the owner, cannot re revoke for the current owner. Okay. So the owner cannot revoke the owner. Okay. So that's the check we have. Now we have to simply update the data to the new one. And that's pretty fine. Now let's write the last function we have called destroy destroy and this one is a very common function you will find in all the smart contracts so that's pretty simple in the like a previous one so just simply use this self destruct and we have to pass the owner so in that way we can easily able to destroy the entire contract and nobody can able to use it so i believe this entire thing makes sense to all of you guys okay this one is a pretty simple smart contract we have written for the insurance sector but you can make it more complex it depends that what kind of insurance product you have okay so if you're building for a medical it will have a different data set if you're building for a car it had different data set if you're building for a real estate insurance it have a different data sets but the structure is going to be the same the function is going to be the same but the data model would be different so that's the things you have to keep in mind this is the entire contract we have for the insurance industry so you have seen that what are the couple of important variables we have defined how we are calling the functions what are the function need to be there in an insurance contract to make the claim to create policy to buy the policy so the one challenge i want to give you the one tax i want to give you to solve this that you have to utilize this and create a one single page front end use react use next years use typescript so build a system where a user can come and purchase a policy so instead of going with this like anonymous policy i want you to define a policy and the user is going to buy that 
So that's the functionality I want you to think that how you can use this function and add a couple of data from your end into this function so other can come and buy the policy and you can hold the fund in the contract and then make the transaction happen okay so this part i'm going to leave on you it's a very good practice thing that how smart contract work if you really want to understand the entire logic of the contract okay so i believe that you guys will build this project and do let me know in the comment section that if you still have any confusion and if you need any more clarity on this contract that what data you should add what are the feature you should include so do let me know that in the comment section so i'll go to make a dedicated video on that and in that i will take all your queries so with that i'm ending this have a wonderful day